All right, we're back here with our video sit down with candidates, and now we're turn, turning our attention to the Mason County Commission District 3 race. Mary Jo Cady is my guest, and well, Mary Jo, when I came to this county, you were on the council. <laughs> I was. You were on the commission now, rather, and uh, you want to go back. I do want to go back. Um, I was elected for two terms. After six and a half years, my husband's health had deteriorated quite a bit and I needed to change my priorities and take care of him. And so I resigned after six and a half years uh, from one of the best positions I'd ever had. Mm -hmm. And now I'm back. I grew up, uh, I, well basically I started school in Belfair and finished school in Seattle, lived in the Queen Anne area went to Washington State University, uh, then my father died, came to, went back to Seattle to the University of Washington, uh, was married my senior year, and after he graduated, we ended up at Fort Knox, waiting for him to be sent to Vietnam. Uh, while at Fort Knox, I taught school for a year, taught second grade, and then when he was deployed, moved back to Seattle, and I worked as the head bookkeeper for the Seattle Teachers Association and the Seattle Education Association. And during my free time, I was a Red Cross volunteer at the Seattle Veterans Hospital. They had just such an overload of patients from the war. And we were getting the amputees in Seattle and the burn victims were going to San Diego. So I spent a lot of time up at the Veterans Hospital and I ended up being the liaison between the Seattle King County chapter of the Red Cross and military families in the area and working with them and also president of the Waiting Wives Club which was at times a traumatic job. Uh, after Vietnam our marriage became a casualty of PTSD. Mm -hmm. Vietnam veterans and their families weren't told anything about the effects of the war and so I moved on and married Jim Cady who is here from Mason County. Uh, we lived out on the North Shore. He had started working for the PUD when he was 19 mm -hmm. and uh, when he went into management we moved down to the Shelton area uh, into the Southside School District. We raised our three sons here. Um, they went to Southside and Shelton and then I became a county commissioner. We thought initially that my husband would uh, run for public office, but his health was failing. Um, his friends came to me and said, you're the one that has to do it, so. You have to do it, huh? I did it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I'd had a lot of leadership and volunteer experience and other things that kind of led up to it, and it worked out just fine and became a, a really good position for me. And like I said, after six and a half years, then it became evident that he was dying and I needed to be home. Uh, in the meantime, the, the position never came up at the same time that I was available. Hmm. So it's, it's kind of worked out now that it has. And I started volunteering when I was 14 as a candy striper at Children's Hospital. And I've had a history of volunteering forever, lifelong. I've been a lion for 25 years. I've been a trustee on the Northwest Lions Foundation. I held several um, leadership positions while I was with the county with regional, other regional offices and things. So uh, I'm the one that has the knowledge. I've got the experience. And it's all led up to this, to coming back and doing what I like to do best, and I'm hoping that the citizens of the county will see fit to put me back into the job that I know I can do. So topping the list of things. Pardon me? Topping the list of things now uh -huh. is the county budget and the potential shortfall. Mm -hmm. Where are your thoughts on this? I hate to think about a potential shortfall this early in the year. You know, that's, that's disturbing. Uh, as far as increasing revenue, revenue is increased at the county through taxes. 
I'm not a believer in new taxes. I believe that you need to live within your means. You know what your means are, but what has happened is that they've over budgeted. They've budgeted beyond their means. And so they need to look at the cause, rein it back in. Uh, there's a potential for a levy shift, which would mean taking money from public works and putting it into the general fund, but that would take a vote of the people. And say you want to take a percentage, whatever percentage, from one and give it to the other. The voters would have to vote on two different ballots, one to take it away and the other one to give it back. If they voted to take it away and not to give it back, then we've lost that much more money again. So I'm not in favor of a levy shift. Uh, taking money from public works right now would be a bad thing in my estimation. We have 692 miles of county road, same as we had 15 years ago. We haven't built any new roads. We haven't been able to. We have fewer employees. We have a smaller budget. And yet, from the state, we have a higher workload. Because all of a sudden, it's not the roads. It's the fish barrier issues. And hundreds of culverts in this county that can be fish passage barrier problems that we need to take care of. And that's coming out of public works. And unless there's a lot of money from the state, uh, it's a tough job to get done. So, OK. So, yeah. good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, that, well, let me say one more sure, thing about sure. that, is that to enhance the income, the best thing to do is to work with economic development, get more people coming in. We've got. Um, John L. Scott in Belfair has already sold over 53 houses this year. That feeds into the real estate excise tax. That feeds into property values. All of those extra taxes that weren't anticipated will be coming in. I think we need to get past this bump, and then we're going to see great things happening because it's growing in the north end. It's starting to grow in the south end. Something I wanted to. I, this is off topic, or not off topic, but something that, that has bothered me about this community when I, since I've come, came here, is the north-south mentality. Um, how do we change that? Or is there, a, do you see a way of changing that? I think we were on a real good path before, but with the downturn, we had to cut back what we were doing in the North Mason area. I would love to see a permit center back up in North Mason. We had one before where people up there could do their county work right there in their own community. Uh, that's a long drive, and I make it quite often. Yeah. But um, getting a permit center, getting more uh, county offices into the North End, I think would help an awful lot. I don't see as much of a barrier as there was before. I remember our kids were, or our oldest son anyway, was getting a lot of flack because he was moving from North Mason to Shelton. You know, I don't think there's that kind of a thing anymore. But um, it does exist. It's just part of the dynamics and the geography that we have. But if we can get more services to the North End, I think people will be happier. So let's talk about public safety. It's always a priority for every candidate right but uh, you have it's more than just well first public safety is more than just sheriff's office absolutely <laughs> and and you want to be able to treat all the departments equally mm -hmm. how would you propose to do that the first thing you do is you go away from bottom line budgeting okay. go to line item budgeting where you can see exactly what's being spent and where and this you don't get away from it in a one year thing. It's going to take a couple of years to get back to where everybody is being treated equally. Um, you can't do it if you don't know where the money's going. And by making bottom line budgeting, uh, it's irresponsible, in my opinion. It's irresponsible to do that when you're having shortfalls, when money's tight. You need to get to a point where everybody has to account for every penny. And it's got to be a team effort. 
you know, when it's, you can't, unless you know the people and the offices and what's going on, uh, you can't make a logical decision. Pat Swartos was our county clerk mm -hmm. for way over 30 years. And she told me when I left, she says, I want you to know you are the only county commissioner in all the years I've been here that's made an appointment with me, met me in my office, sat down and said, tell me what I need to know about what you do. Hmm. You know, so that when we get to the budgeting process, I have a clear idea of what your needs are, what your staffing is, where you're located, what your office looks like. I said, those are the things that I felt I needed to know as a commissioner to make logical decisions regarding her budget. And I did that with every elected official and every department head for that matter. Uh, it was harder with the department heads because they worked directly for the commissioners, so they weren't quite as open. And I finally told them, I said, you are the professionals. County commissioners come in and they can be from anywhere in the realm and have any kind of knowledge, but you're the professionals, you do the job. Uh, tell me what you need. Let's work together. Don't automatically think I'm gonna sit here with a hammer. I said, we have to work together. So uh, in order to make everything equitable for everybody, you have to know the people, you have to know what they do, and then you can make the right decisions. 15 years is a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. And, and this is, you know, I, I like to prepare you guys, you, the candidates, what I'm going to ask, and this is off what I prepared <laughs> you for. Um, what have you seen change, not necessarily just in county government, but mm -hmm. overall, what, what's the biggest change that you've seen in those 15 years? I wish I could say I've seen a lot of change. I haven't. I, when I came back, I was in Pullman for six years, mm -hmm. and I came back. And it was like a time warp. Went back, I mean, there's, other than the technology and having you in the room, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all of that, uh, there hasn't been a lot of change. I asked the commissioners when I came back, I said, give me something to do. I said, I love working with government. If you've got openings that you need filled, whatever, put me somewhere, I wanna mm -hmm. help. So I ended up on the tip cap, which has just been great because my, issues have been around transportation a lot of times anyway. And the Belfair bypass is still not done. We were ready to turn the first shovel of dirt on the bypass when I left. It's still not done. Uh, the Lynch Road intersection mm -hmm. is still not done. The Johns Prairie intersection with Highway 3 is still not done. It was like everything stopped when I left and I came back and we're picking it back up. Um, there have been a multitude of commissioners in this position, um, but I haven't seen I haven't seen a lot of change in the county. Hmm. Start thinking about it. Well, I, I have to agree with you there because I've been here since two thousand one, and yeah, I mean, as far as county issues, as far as human issues. Um, you know, the, our greatest challenge is, I think that's one of your questions later, but our greatest challenge now is the opioid mental health homelessness epidemic that basically wasn't here. When I raised my kids, they could take off on their bikes in the morning and be gone and I wouldn't worry about it. And we didn't have cell phones <laughs> right. to bring them back in. But uh, those kind of social issues have changed. Well, let's get into the, the challenges. Um, you talked about opioid. What else is on your list? Well, I, th I think that's the biggest challenge is the human issues because it affects all of us in one way or another. We're all going to be um, impacted, whether it's an immediate impact where you're actually dealing with those people through the health department or the criminal justice system, whatever. But it impacts our budget. And it all comes back, as far as the commissioners are concerned, with the budget. Uh, our health department is working for the safety of the community. And that means working with these people that are having such difficult times. Uh, the public safety aspect of it 
isn't just health and roads and the sheriff's office. It's also the children, the teenagers that get put into the detention center. It's the people that go into the jail. It's the um, prosecuting attorney's office that has to deal with each of these. It's the clerk's office that has to you know, schedule everything for the courts. It's the courts that have to determine what's going to happen with these people. And I have seen a change in the court system. We have more superior court judges. And we have uh, other smaller courts now that are handling other details. So they're all being impacted. Uh, right now, 70% of the county budget goes into the criminal justice arena. Is it going to have to be more than that? I don't know. I wish I had the answers to that. I could, I could make a mint. <laughs> I could write a book and uh, everybody across the country would say, wow, she came up with an answer. We don't have any more homeless. The opioid stuff's gone and mental health is on a recovery. But uh, I don't have those answers. We'll just have to work with those organizations and associations that are trying their best to get it taken care of. So if you're uh, elected to this seat, what are your top uh, priorities? Top priorities are, first of all, to make sure that the citizens of Mason County are served to the best of our ability within the funds that we have. And that means that they're always treated with respect and dignity. You know, they're you hear stories <laughs> and I get phone calls, you know, and we need to make sure that our employees at all levels deal with people fairly. Uh, it's, it's really important. Um, as far as anything else, I think the budget is probably the biggest priority besides serving the, the people of the county. And you can't, <laughs> on this budget thing, you can't budget numbers that you don't know for sure. You know, two years ago, we had a horrible downfall because of sales tax revenue that didn't come in and timber tax revenue that didn't come in. Budget the year before's amount. Don't build in a, a percentage, whatever, then if that unanticipated income does come in, put it over here so that next year when you have contract negotiations, you have money to deal with. If you never plan ahead, you're not going to have it. Don't rely on DNR to be delivering your timber tax every year because it obviously doesn't happen. But if it does, it's unanticipated income. It can go over here and be used for unanticipated necessary expenses. Mary Jo, uh we could talk about a lot of things <laughs> in this time period. Um, but the last thing I want to ask you to do for me, not on our sheet that I prepared, but tell everybody why you should be returned to this Commissioner District 3 seat, briefly, if it's possible. Well, when I look at the other candidates, I'm the only one with the knowledge of the job because I've done it for six and a half years. I'm the only one with the experience working with not just other commissioners and other people in the county, but experience working with uh, the region. We're not sitting here in a vacuum. You know, we're part of a bigger region that needs to work with the state and the agencies on air pollution and transportation systems and public health. Uh, one of my biggest challenges was working with the Pacific Mountain Workforce Development Council and we were back in Washington DC working with our congressional delegation on October 11, 2001, the day that anthrax was found in the Rayburn, Rayburn building. Mm. I was in the Rayburn building that day and left 15 minutes before they shut it down. I mean there are things that you know there are experiences and jobs that you do. Uh, I've done them I've worked on Pack Mountain, I've worked with Columbia Pacific rc and I've been on the board of the EDC. I've belonged to the, both chambers for years, uh, having nothing to do with that. You know. 
and I've got proven leadership. I've, I started young. Uh, I was Girls Club president at my high school. And I have just, for whatever reason, moved up into leadership positions. So I've got the knowledge, I've got the experience, and I've got the leadership. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate it.